One of the reasons I'm on YouTube is to draw attention to ideas you might otherwise never have heard about. In the foundations of physics, it's rare to find genuinely new ideas that aren't obviously wrong. But today I have one that might be going somewhere. It's a recent series of papers from physicists who say that space retains the memory of the matter that passed through it and that dark matter might be a relic of this memory. That sounds very interesting. Let's have a look. Gravity is special in many regards and not just because it's refused quantization. One thing that makes gravity special is that it almost seems to duplicate the information from the other forces. Think about it. The gravitational field of a particle contains information about the particle's mass and its momentum. If the particle has an electric charge, that electric field carries energy and the gravitational field therefore also knows about it. The reverse is not true. The electric field of a particle, for example, carries no information about the particle's mass. To some extent, this duplication is even the case for quantum numbers such as spin and the color charge, though when it comes to those, we run into the problem that we don't have a theory of quantum gravity. Still, I've always found this very intriguing and wondered why there isn't more work on it. There's also gravitational memory, a most remarkable and yet to be confirmed prediction of Einstein's general relativity. When massive bodies such as black holes or neutron stars merge, they emit gravitational waves that stretch and squeeze the fabric of space-time. You'd think that if those waves pass through our planet, they'll wiggle it for a bit and then everything returns to its previous state. But not so. After those waves pass, certain test masses remain permanently displaced. This is known as gravitational memory. Physicists have looked for evidence of this in data from gravitational wave interferometers, but not seen it so far. The new series of publications now isn't directly about either of these memory effects, but it builds on them. The authors imagine space-time as a vast grid of microscopic quantum bits that act as information carriers, atoms of space in some sense. The size of these bits, they say, is at the Planck scale, so they're incredibly small. They call the idea the quantum memory matrix. It sounds like a Netflix reboot. It works like this. Whenever a particle comes by, it interacts with the quantum bits in that location and leaves a memory in them. But in quantum physics, you can't duplicate information. So they say that as time passes, matter gradually loses information to space. One of the benefits of this idea is that it'd do away with the black hole information loss problem. The information never gets destroyed, it's just moved into space. In a recent paper, they go even further and say they can also explain dark matter. That, so their idea, is a consequence of all this information that space is picking up when matter passes through it. That information must carry energy and so it has weight. And that weight comes out to be just roughly correctly to account for dark matter, or so they say. So what are we to make of this? Sounds good but I'm highly dubious about this for various reasons. For one thing, where does the extra energy come from that supposedly in the information that makes up dark matter? Usually dark matter is just assumed to have been produced together with normal matter in the early universe. If you produce it later in some way, memory, fact or whatever, that seems to violate energy conservation. There's also the problem that you can't chop up space into discrete chunks of Planck length size without breaking Einstein's theories. This is because in Einstein's theory, any length, including the Planck length, can get length contracted to a smaller length. So what does it even mean for something to have the size of a Planck length? It means nothing. This is why I give this a 10 out of 10 on the bullshit meter. It's a good idea in principle, but it has a lot of open ends. So why am I telling you about this anyway? Because few ideas are born perfect, and I think this one might have a useful core. Give it some more work and maybe it'll go somewhere. I think one can summarize this idea as space never forgets. So next time you feel like the universe is holding a grudge, maybe it is. When I was a kid, I had my room decorated with Star Trek posters. 
but I gave up on posters because they're just such a mess to deal with. I've changed my mind because I've discovered posters, but made of steel. They don't fade, don't crinkle, and they don't get dog ears. This comes from a company called Displate, and they have a selection of over 2 million motifs. But wait, I hear you say, how do you get steel to stick to the wall? With a magnet! Yes, with a magnet! The magnet goes with a sticker onto the wall, and the steel on that. So if you get tired of Harry Potter, swap him out for Snoopy. And no, this sticker doesn't tear off the wallpaper. I tried. Display doesn't just have posters for movies or brands, they also have unique designs from artists. They recently also introduced a new type of print called Textra that has 3D contours and surface areas with different texture and gloss. If you're looking for a last minute GIF, you should really check this out because their deliveries arrive in five business days top. And of course I have a special offer. If you use my code Zabine at display.com slash at Sabine, you'll get 23% off if you buy one, 27% off for two and three, and for four or more, you'll get 33% off. Maybe it's time to redecorate your office. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.